Hello and welcome to another video about Grandstream Access Point GWN 7600 series. In this video, I will review the wireless frequency bands 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. And I will provide a comparison between their features and applications. I will also show you how to configure frequency bands using the web interface of GWN Access Points. First, it is worth mentioning that our Grandstream access points support dual band Wi Fi to offer maximum flexibility when setting up your Wi Fi network. So, let's start with 2.4 GHz channel plan. This band offers 14 overlapping channels of 20 MHz. In North America, only 11 channels are available. In Europe and the rest of the world, channels 1 to 13 are available for use. Japan is the only country where all the 14 channels are available. Channels 1, 6 and 11 are considered non-overlapping channels and it is important to select one of these channels when setting up your Wi-Fi network for 2.4 GHz clients. By default uh, GWN access points will automatically select one of these channels during the initial setup. Even if it is possible to use another combination of non-overlapping channels, such as 4 and 9 or 5 and 10, I would not recommend doing that. Because you might end up selecting an adjacent overlapping channel, as shown in the image with channels 1 and 2. So when selecting adjacent overlapping channels, the Wi-Fi performance can be significantly impacted by interference generated by these two channels. It is always critical that you check the channels used by the access point for 2.4 GHz band and ensure that they are not overlapping. Uh, GWN access points support channel bonding feature that combines two or more channels to increase the throughput. This is like increasing the size of a pipe or combining two lanes. So instead of using the default channel width of 20 MHz, GWN access points offer the option to use wider channels of 40 MHz. However, there is a downside to using 40 MHz channels on 2.4 band because uh, 2.4 band does not have enough space to create two non-overlapping channels of 40 MHz, especially in North America, which can result in what we call adjacent channels interference when using more than one access point. In this multi-AP deployment scenario with the access points using 40 MHz channels on 2.4 band, two critical issues emerge. First, Co-channel interference, which is the result of two adjacent access points using the same channel. And second, adjacent channel interference, which is more serious. And both can lead to a significant degradation in the Wi-Fi performance. So one of the scenarios where you want to use 40 MHz channels is when you have an isolated access point that is not subject to interference from any adjacent APs. And of course, the clients need to support 40 megahertz. Otherwise, there is no benefit in using wider channels of 40 megahertz. The web interface of the GWN access point has a dashboard that displays the channels currently used. And based on this uh, screenshot and looking at the channels used at 2.4 band, we can tell that the channels currently used for 2.4 band are not selected wisely. So instead of using channels 1, 6, and 11, the wireless admin selected an adjacent overlapping channel, which is channel 5, and he used channel 6 twice within the same basic set area. So this is something that you should avoid when configuring access points in 2.4 band. Now let's review 5 GHz channel plan. The first thing that you will notice is that 5 GHz band has many more channels of 20 MHz and they are non-overlapping. 
We saw in the previous slides that adjacent channels in 2.4 band are overlapping. In 5 GHz band, adjacent channels do not overlap. They are considered adjacent non-overlapping channels. So with channel bonding on 5 GHz band, we can create wider channels of 40, 80, and even 160 MHz based on the 802.11 standard that is being implemented, of course. So while channel bonding on 2.4 band is not recommended, using 40 MHz channels on 5 GHz band can be beneficial, though I would not recommend using uh, 80 MHz and 160 MHz channels unless you have a good reason to use them. One of the challenges that you can face with wider channels is when you have a dense wireless network where you need to deploy multiple APs and reuse the same channels multiple times. And the thing to keep in mind is that the wider the channels, the less channels you have. So with 40 MHz, you only have 12 channels instead of 25 channels. And with 80 MHz, you only have 6 channels. And with 160 MHz, you only have 2 channels. In North America, actually, you can end up having 1 channel. And this makes uh, 160 MHz channels useless in a dense wireless network where you need to deploy multiple uh, access points. It is also important to note that channels 52 and 144 require DFS in many countries. And DFS stands for Dynamic Frequency Selection. It is, um, it is a mechanism that detects and avoids the use of these channels when there is a military or a weather radar operating nearby. The reason we need to be aware of DFS when planning a wireless network is the fact that DFS may cause some problems in some scenarios. And I'm just going to give you a couple of examples here. Some wireless devices don't support DFS channels, and as a result, when you configure the GWN access point to use a static channel from the DFS range, the wireless device will not be able to connect. Also, when a DFS event occurs, a GWN access point will notify the wireless clients that there is a channel switch. Some client devices might take longer to transition to the new channel, and in some cases, they might not transition at all. And you will need to turn off and turn on the Wi-Fi or reboot the computer for it to reconnect again. So checking DFS channels is an important step in troubleshooting Wi-Fi connection uh, issues on wireless uh, clients. Another feature that is built into the GrandStream access point is DCA or dynamic channel assignment, which is basically a mechanism that adjusts the channel assignments for the access point to uh, optimize Wi-Fi performance and avoid co-channel interference among access points. In other words, DCA helps detect and avoid interference when two adjacent access points are using the same channel. So now that we explained the properties of each band, let's compare the application characteristics of each band and hopefully this will help you understand when it is best to use 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz band frequency. So one of the major differences between 2.4 and 5 GHz is the coverage range. 2.4 GHz offers large coverage range and it does a better job penetrating solid materials. This makes it the ideal band to use when you are located further from the access point. So when it comes to coverage range, 2.4 GHz is the better frequency band to use. However, when it comes to speed, it is best to use 5 GHz. Generally, the higher the frequency, the, the faster the data rate is. Therefore, the 5 GHz band transmits more data and sends it faster compared to 2.4 uh, GHz. Uh, today, many wireless devices communicate on the 2.4 GHz band. And as a result, the 2.4 band 
gets easily oversaturated and overcrowded, which can degrade the Wi-Fi performance significantly. Some of the main sources of interference on 2.4 GHz are baby monitors, microwaves, and cordless phones. Uh, another element that causes the 2.4 band to easily get oversaturated is the fact that there are not many non-overlapping channels as we described earlier. Therefore, we can only have up to three non-overlapping channels when using 1, 6, and 11. For 5 GHz band, weather and military radars are the most common sources of interference. As we explained earlier, the built-in DFS functionality in GWN access points helps avoid the channels used by radar when it detects one in proximity. The chances of getting interference from a radar are still very, very low. Therefore, uh, because 5 GHz band is less susceptible to interference, it makes it the ideal band to use in higher capacity environments. So this slide summarizes the characteristics of each band. So one of the advantages of using the low frequency 2.4 GHz band is larger coverage range. However, the downside of using 2.4 GHz is slower speed. Uh, it gets congested with non-Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi interference, and it only has three non-overlapping channels. On the other hand, the high frequency 5 GHz, the downside of using it is it has a shorter range compared to 2.4 GHz. However, it has more advantages like faster speed, it is less susceptible to interference, and it has more channels. We can get up to 24 non-overlapping channels of 20 GHz. So now that we understand the characteristics of each band, GWN access points offer the option to select one band over the other, statically or dynamically. You can go to the web interface of the GWN access point and configure it to use a specific band instead of the other. Uh, the GWN access point, uh, they come with the built-in mechanism that allows the access point to dynamically prioritize a specific band when the wireless client is the wood band. And this mechanism is called band steering. And technically speaking, with a dual band, wireless client tries to connect to uh, uh, GWN AP. The GWN access point can be configured to prioritize either band, 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. There is also the option to load balance between the two bands. So in this example, the GWN access point is configured to prioritize 5 gigahertz for wireless clients. So as you can see, the laptop sends probes for both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. However, GWN only sends response probe on 5 gigahertz band only, which will force the wireless client or the laptop to connect to 5 gigahertz band. All right, let's go ahead and log into the web interface of GWN access point to show you where and how to manage the channel frequencies. The channel and band configuration using the controller can be done at three levels. The first one is under radio settings. So these are the default settings that will apply to all the access points that are managed by the same controller. And if we look at these settings right here, we have band steering, so it is set to disable. So in case you want to prioritize 5 GHz over 2.4 GHz, you can choose 5 GHz in priority. In case you want to change the channel width of the 2.4 band from 20 to 40 MHz, you can change it right here. Though, as I mentioned during the presentation, for 2.4 GHz, it's always recommended to use the channels of 20 megahertz. For channel assignment, there is the option of auto, which allows the access point to dynamically choose and select the best available channels. The same thing applies for 5 gigahertz. You can choose between 20, 40, and 80 megahertz. So in this case, I'm just going to set it to 20 megahertz. And for channel assignments uh, for 5 gigahertz, it is set to auto. However, when you set the channel to auto, it is not going to select the channels that fall in the DFS range. So if you want the access point 
To also select channels from the DFS range, you can check this option right here, then save and apply the changes. So as I mentioned, whatever changes you apply at the radio are going to become the default settings for all the access points that you add to this controller. In case you want to make explicit changes to a specific access point, you can go to access points configuration. If you have multiple access points, you can select one of them. Then you can go here. So instead of using the radius settings, you can choose a different setting. So for example, if you want to prioritize 2.4 gigahertz in this access point, you can choose 2G in priority. There's also the option where you can enable and disable which band you would like to use. For example, if I want to disable 5 gigahertz, I can just check this option. The same thing applies here to the access point configuration where I can choose the width of the channel. So for example, if the um, radio settings are using 20 megahertz and I want to use 40 megahertz for a specific case scenario and specifically for that access point, I can select 40 uh, megahertz. Uh, for 5 gigahertz, we talked earlier about DFS. So you can actually go to the access point and statically assign it the channel to use on 5 gigahertz band. And the channels that fall in the DFS range are marked with DFS. So this is like a warning sign to you that you need to select these channels wisely and become aware of them in case a problem arises that is related to DFS. So I'm going to select one of these channels, then apply the changes. The third place where you can make changes to the channel is at the SSID level. And the SSID provides us with the option to choose which band we would like to use this SSID for. So if we have this SSID for devices that we know and we are sure that they support 5 gigahertz and we want to prioritize 5 gigahertz, we can set the, uh, the SSID band to 5 gigahertz. So only devices that support 5 gigahertz will be able to connect to that SSID. Then just save and apply the changes. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave us a comment below if you have a request for any future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all our videos. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.